Right, so what do you think, Carl? Should I do this? Honestly, I would recommend against it. That gun was far from the only strange and valuable resource I'm capable of acquiring, and I can surely get you anything you need to track McGee and stop virtually any plan he may concoct. On the other hand, though, I mean, I'd like to have a backup in case I ever lose access to your resources. Well, that'd only happen if you did something to violate our deal, and as it stands, there aren't too many things you could do to violate it. I suppose... Look, you don't need this guy's help. Like I said, I have all the tools you'll need to track this figure and save the world from him periodically. And remind me, where did you get them again? You'll find out as soon as I'm ready to tell you. And when will that be exactly? Soon enough. Now, go ahead and get to your review. Alright. Hello there, I'm Thagoso Daladon, also known as the Literature Critic, and this is Verde. Alright, so there's a significant amount of art in this book, as you can see, so I'm gonna have to cover it. It's nice. I wish the backgrounds were a little bit less blurry, but overall there's really not much to complain about. It especially shines a little bit near the end, but it's nice throughout the entire thing. Alright, so I do need to note before I go on that my nostalgia probably actually renders me incompetent to judge this thing, but I've decided to anyway. But I did want to warn you about that before moving on. That said, this is the story of Verde, a green tree python. After he hatches, his mother reminds all of her children to grow up to be nice and green. Green tree pythons, in case you don't know, vary in color when they're born, and gradually turn green as they age. Verde, though, is upset at the idea of turning green because he likes the look of his yellow scales and black stripes. Because of this, and after some interaction with some adults, he decides that he actually wants to avoid being green to the best of his abilities, and sets off to find ways to do so. The plot here is good. Obviously, this is a non-chapter children's book, so it's not going to be amazing. Though I actually have heard there are some exceptions to that, namely Jonathan Livingston Siegel, which I have not read. But anyways, this is good for what it is. By the way, don't think I'm insulting it for having some lesser nature because it's for a younger target audience. I'm just acknowledging that it has less time to develop things. If anything, it's more impressive for it, even if it's not more enjoyable, because being as good as it is requires greater writing skill. All of that said, there is one thing I want to note. Some of Verde's methods of trying to avoid turning green, like trying to scrub the greenness off of his scales, make sense, even though I understand why they don't work and wouldn't in real life, I understand why he might think they would work. But... In another instance, and in fact the first thing he tries, is to fling himself fast enough from a tree to avoid being green. I don't understand why he thinks that will work. Maybe he thinks that the air friction will turn him a hotter color, or that as he speeds along the green scales will get like ripped off of him, but honestly... I'm just... unsure. Alright, so there are technically four characters here worth talking about, but three of them basically function as a single unit, so I'm going to talk about those three as though they were one, leaving us two. Verde is the main character. He's a young, somewhat impatient, youthful snake who fears growing up. He's likable enough and does his job pretty well. He has an alright personality too, so I like him, he's well done. As for the three older greens, I like them too. They have more depth than their initial appearance would let on, and they are also nice characters who do their job well. If anything, I kind of like them better than Verde in a way, simply because they turn out to have a lot more depth than they're initially presented as having. In general, they're good and do their jobs well, sums up the characters here nicely. Except Dozer, who I regard as one note in a slightly annoying way and who I honestly don't think should actually be in the book. But other than that, they're good. 
The theme of this story is the fear of aging, or rather, since this is a children's book, I should say the message of this story is that one should not fear aging. Snark aside, though, it actually doesn't feel preachy or heavy-handed. There's nothing wrong with having a message, especially in a book for children, and here it never really detracts from the book. In fact, I feel the need to praise the book for how well this message is delivered. It's not just that it doesn't feel preachy, the book actually seems like a well-reasoned, if somewhat simplistic, argument. And its logic makes perfect sense. Another good point is that no one ever really feels like a straw man. It's a well-delivered message, is my point. In conclusion, this book is good and solid. Adults and older children obviously aren't in its target audience, but if you do have children, I'd say it's actually worth tracking down. So with that said, see ya.